Hi, we are live on the LGBTQ Real Estate Podcast, connecting LGBTQ home buyers, sellers, and real estate pros since 2007. Now, we have a very interesting show today. We typically, um, on the podcast, interview realtors in their local communities so people on the web can reach local realtors. And, you know, I'm doing this since 2004, actually. And what I've found is without advocacy on the street and without people making a difference, the LGBTQ community does not necessarily have the confidence that they need to want to go out and buy homes, to want to marry, to form a family, okay? And the two folks we have with us today, between Dennis and Judy Shepard and myself, we've just got a phenomenal show. Okay, I know that's a big um, order to keep, but I'm going to keep it and I'm going to dive right into it. Okay, um, my name is Jeff Berger. Okay, and in 2007, I started an organization called the National Association of Gay and Lesbian Real Estate Professionals. And by 2019, Judy and Dennis, you visited our conference in Palm Springs. I know we had a wonderful time. And you educated our guests of our conference, there were approximately 500, about your experience. And, you know, some people would say you turn lemons into lemonade, but I'm not even going to go there. You just acted wise under the worst of circumstances. That's my honest opinion. And, you know, your advocacy work within the LGBT community is legendary. You're often referred to as the mother and father of the LGBTQ community. Also, some leading LGBTQ advocates have said that you are the nicest people they wish they never met. And that's pretty deep. Okay, so I'm going to tell a little story because when someone says they wish they never met you, and that was the president of NGLCC. Okay, at their largest conference that I was at, that, that, that we met each other in Philadelphia years ago in 2019, early before you spoke at our conference. And what he meant by that was, this wasn't your calling. And what I want to do is, you know, tell this story, I'll, I'll go into it. The reason why we started this podcast about a month ago is because I noticed my two daughters, ages 11 and 13, no longer watch network television. They watch YouTube. I'm not a TV guy, but when I do turn on the TV, I want to wind down and just, you know, click the remote control and, you know, escape a little bit. I have to change the TV onto Comcast, you know, my provider, because it's always on YouTube. Okay, so this show is on YouTube. And I said to myself, you know, my daughters, if I invited Robert De Niro to dinner, they wouldn't even know who he was. <laughs> it's the truth. And if I invited you two to dinner, they wouldn't even know who you are. Okay? Ironically, they would because I've um, told them all about you. And Dennis, you know, if you're in the uh, area this summer during Pride, you have a standing invite for a barbecue at my home, you two. So if not, I'll, I'll meet you wherever you are in South Florida. So... You know, I wanted to go down memory lane because I'm doing this since 2004. And I know you two have been doing it since 1998. Okay, that's a long time. You're erasing hate since 1988. That's like, that, that's really a long time. So I'm going to dive, is it 98? 98, yeah, my eyes are terrible. I'm wearing contacts. <laughs> you have to excuse me, time flies, right? Okay. <laughs> I don't wear my glasses when I do the podcast. So what I want to do is I want to open a, a window, okay, and I want to present some slides, okay? And what I'd like to do is say a little bit about myself and what brought me here, okay, to you all, including Judy, you and Dennis and the audience, okay? So in 2004, if we remember the Bush Cheney administration was using same-sex marriage as a 
part of their campaign, you know, this was wrong. And if you vote for us, we're going to, you know, support you, whoever they were. And, you know, I was a child that experienced divorce. My mom got, got divorced twice. Not about my personal story, but I knew that it was going to be the lawyers that helped the LGBT community navigate. Okay. And in 2004, I started this website called GayMarriageLawyers.com. And what's exciting is if you go look at the top of the browser, it says web.archive.org. This is an archive. You can look at any website from any year. Okay. It's called the Wayback Machine. So anyone on this podcast watching now, just Google the Wayback Machine and you could go to any website at any time. And it's really cool. Okay. And especially if you're a website developer and you have a website, you want to know what you were doing marketing 10 years ago. So this was my site that I started to help the LGBT community through same-sex marriage, okay? Because we didn't have same-sex marriage then, right? So GayMarriageLawyers.com and GayFinancialAdvisors.com was my idea to help the LGBTQ community. Back then, it was the gay and lesbian community, okay? You wouldn't even see it saying gay marriage lawyers and gay financial advisors these days. That's how times have changed. But look civil unions okay i'm going to click civil unions for example and right there it defines what a civil union is healthcare proxy defines healthcare proxy could you believe back then a a couple you know someone went into the hospital and their spouse couldn't even visit them perhaps it's unbelievable okay and it happened a lot back then Okay, especially all through AIDS, you know, parents didn't agree of the relationship and they weren't even allowed to come in the hospital and see their loved ones, sometimes on their deathbed. Okay, and if you didn't have the right power of attorney, okay, we'll get to that now, and the right prenuptial agreements and the right joint purchase and savings agreements, you can transfer your property. Okay. Um, Let alone estate planning and all that. So, you know, there was a lot of work to be done. And Judy and Dennis, I know you were there. You know, I followed the story from day one. Okay, America was by your side. Okay. So I want to click out and about right now. Okay, to show you a little bit about, you know, my journey and how this podcast is really important to someone. Because I think at the end of this podcast, people are going to want to get involved with the Manning Shepherd Foundation. They're going to want to support its initiatives. And that's what this is about. It's about raising awareness for the Matthew Shepard Foundation. This is not about me, okay? This is about, you know, how we got here. This is a story. So in 2004, I started supporting and sponsoring gay marriage events, okay? And this is Stephanie Trapasso. She's a transgender financial advisor. She was with Smith Barney at the time, okay? So I sent her that sign. It was a Gay, gay and Lesbian Wedding Expo out in San Francisco. She popped the sign up. I sent her the T-shirt. If you see, she's even got the T-shirt. Here's Mitchell Coteen. If you're familiar with Mitchell Coteen, he was the leading attorney on Lawrence versus Texas, okay, which overthrew the sodomy laws in the United States. I worked closely with Mitchell Coteen. I'm going to say click here to view Mitchell Coteen's testimonial to GayMarriageLawyers.com. And you're really going to appreciate this, okay, because this is deep. Here's a testimonial by Mitchell Coteen, a Houston, Texas attorney most famous for serving as local counsel for John Lawrence versus Tyron Gardner, Lawrence versus Texas, okay, removed sodomy laws throughout America. He says, in the mid-1980s, HIV started to devastate the the gay community, and no one knew where to go for help. There were not many lawyers or doctors at that time who knew anything about HIV, but a few professionals decided they needed to be prepared to help the community, and they did. We're now faced with a new age of gay and lesbian freedom, and with that freedom comes legal issues and responsibilities that must be taken seriously. GayMarriageLawyers.com is the answer to the new gay legal situation. GayMarriageLawyers.com provides a much needed resource to help members of the community find answers to new and unique legal problems through educated professionals. As with HIV in the 1980s, 
This new era can be scary without answers and guidance by the right people. GayMarriageLawyers.com helps take some of that fear away by providing lawyers to help provide the answers in this new and exciting area. Mitchell Coutine. Okay. So, you know, it, it takes a village is my point. And it was people like this, you know, lawyers and financial advisors, you know, that really made a big difference. Okay. And I got a, I got to show I'm a little paparazzi here, a picture of Yoko Ono, Yoko ono and I at the white party, November, 2007 and 2004 was in Miami. Okay. So what's important now, okay, is people that were making changes like you, Judy and Dennis, and myself, this banner at the top is not available. It was a hidden link. It didn't come up on the Wayback Machine. But I'm going to click it, and it brings you to Gay Realtor Directory, GayRealtyNet.com. And now you'll see the story starting to tie in. Okay? So by 2004, late 2004, the site was written up. Hold one moment. Okay. So by 2004, late 2004, GayRealtyNet.com was written up in the Washington Post. Okay. It says local real estate agent John Edelman didn't expect much when he signed up with GayRealtyNet.com, an online database of real estate agents who are either gay, lesbian, or friendly to the gay and lesbian communities. Okay. But what's important is this is what helps fair housing. It's realtors being able to, you know, help their local community, guide them to their safe place, purchase a home with comfort, um, knowing that, you know, the professional understands them. Okay. So fast forward in 2007, this is from the Wayback Machine Nagarep. When the, when the site first started, okay? By 2010, we had amended the National Association of Realtors Amendment Article 10 to include sexual orientation, okay? That was really a big deal because this includes realtor to customer conduct and real estate um, industry conduct. So if you work at a real estate brokerage firm, you can't be discriminated against. Okay, and here it says members of Nagarep began their mission. Okay, so fast forward in time because the story is so important. Okay, and I'm excited to tell this story. I'm, I'm proud to share it with you, Judy and Dennis, and who's here watching this podcast. Fast forward to 2013, HUD Secretary Sean Donovan was a guest speaker at our DC event. Okay. And the reason why he was is we were lobbying for gender identity to be included to the National Association of Realtors Code of Ethics. The link before that I showed you was sexual orientation. Back in 2010, the National Association of Realtors said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We understand sexual orientation, but we don't understand gender identity. So we got HUD, we got HRC, we got the task force, we got the leading LGBTQ organizations of the time and you know they're still around um, to come and educate the National Association of Realtors which is the largest trade organization in the world and lo and behold three months later or four months later gender identity was included to the NAR code of ethics okay um, I'm proud to say a couple months later in 2013 I was invited to the White House the LGBTQ Pride Month perception. Okay. There's Barack Obama and Joe Biden in the background. It was a wonderful day. Congressman John Lewis, what a, what a treat. I'll tell you a quick story. He says to me, you know, I'm the only man alive from the day that Martin Luther King gave his speech. I have a dream. And he really liked what I was doing. And he sat with me and it was hard to even speak to him because every moment, you know, you're with him, everyone came over, they wanted to take a selfie with him. But we actually sat down and 
had a meal together, you know, hors d'oeuvres like they do at the White House. Not, not that everyone would know. We got to meet Stuart Milk, wonderful guy. That's the invitation. So I'll fast forward to a couple more things and then we're going to get, because right now we're going into how we met Judy and Dennis. Okay. So 2014, Nagarep does our first conference. Okay. HUD Secretary Julian Castro was unable to attend. However, he does send a video message. Okay. And I'm going to include links to all this stuff. Okay. You know, all work and no play doesn't work for the LGBTQ community. Of course, we did a cruise night out in Fort Lauderdale on the Intracoastal drag show, all the above. So much fun. Okay. You got to play a little also. So moving forward. Okay. Jim Obergefell. Okay. So we're starting to really get marriage equality now. Okay. Jim Obergefell, Obergefell versus Hodges, um, U.S. Supreme Court case. Just amazing. Okay. Spoke at Niagara. U.S. Representative Mark DeCano. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not fast forward the link. But Secretary Julian Castro. Okay, well, this is live, so Jim Obergefell, there he is speaking at Nagarep. I'm sorry, I didn't advance the slide before. Okay. We reached out to the U.S. Um, Equality Court Caucus, and U.S. Representative Mark Takano, of course, is a leading member. Steve Jones spoke at our conference in 2017. Sarah McBride, HRC Communications Director, 2018. Jody Winterhoff, HRC, 2019. Jonathan Lovitz of NGLCC, Drew, Gr Drew Griffin of PFLAG, and there you are, Judy and Dennis, at our 2019 event. Now, it was really a pleasure to host you all and I'm going to stop screen and we're going to get to our conversation. And I'm sorry I was so long winded there. But, you know, you two have just been such giving, loving people to the LGBT community that you are, as I said before, often referred to as the mother and father of the LGBTQ community. For someone watching this video that may not know you both, like my kids, for example, you know, because this video is going to be on for many years, okay? It's going to be on YouTube. Can you share with us about your story and how we got here today to know each other? Well, it started all in uh, October of 1998. We received a call in Saudi Arabia where we were living uh, that our son, Matt, um, had was in the hospital and that we needed to get home. Um, it didn't look good for him. Um, and at the time we assumed it was a vehicle accident because it says head injuries. So we hurried back, picked up our younger son, got to, uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, where he was hospitalized and found out that he had been, um, taken out on the prairie in Laramie, Wyoming, tied to a fence and beaten with a butt of a 357 Smith and Wesson revolver using the, the barrel as a hammer handle and the, and the butt of the gun as the hammer head. He passed away on October 12th and we had decided that we needed to do something to help his community. Uh, the LGBTQ community. So we were receiving uh, money from all over the world to help defray the medical expenses. And we didn't think that was the right thing to do. That was our responsibility. So we decided to do something and use that money to help the LGBTQ community. So I went back to Saudi Arabia and our younger son went back to boarding school. Uh, he and Matt both went to boarding school because there are no high schools for Westerners in Saudi Arabia. 
Uh, you were working. You work in the oil industry. I was oh. yes. I was I was working with. Uh, I was an employee of Saudi Aramco in Dahran, Saudi Arabia. Okay. So I went back to to Dahran, and Judy stayed here in Wyoming to start try and figure out what she wanted to do. And she decided we decided that the best thing to do was start a foundation. And um, so we, Judy start, uh, signed the paperwork on it. It officially started basically six weeks after Matt died on his birthday, December 1st of 1998. After that, Judy stayed here and started uh, working. We figured or she figured maybe two years and then they'd forget about us. So she was going to do everything she could in those two years to uh, bring attention to the issues around the LGBTQ community, the lack of, of uh, equality, the amount of discrimination and, and hate and uh, violence uh, directed at the uh, LGBT, LGBTQ community. So she traveled the country and spoke uh, colleges, universities, organizations, corporations, wherever she could, wherever she was invited. And uh, she, she was instrumental in getting a law passed that's called the Matthew Shepard James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act. It was signed by President Obama, October 29 of 2009. And that law uh, expanded on the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which was basically coverage of uh, race, religion, and national origin. The Shepherd Bird Act expanded that to also include gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, a disability uh, perception, and also included Jews as a religion were before, or as a race, where in Act of 64 is only uh, recognized as a religion. So it expanded the, the law uh, quite dramatically um, to uh, provide coverage in all kinds of hate crimes uh, for uh, American citizens. And from then, we've just continued to uh, travel and speak and do what we can. We lobby. We uh, do a lot of training with law enforcement, things like that, to help bring attention to the issues and, and help educate uh, any and all who are interested. Well, well, Judy, I can only imagine, you know, as a grieving mom, you got out on the road and you supported Matthew and kept busy and tried to be distracted, right? Yeah, I, I think the travel and the speaking was a by grieving process. Uh, we kept Matt with me, Matt's stories. Plus I, I felt like if people could see that I was doing okay, that maybe they would do okay as well. There was a lot of fear in the community after what happened to Matt and I wanted to help them move forward, but I also wanted them to take action. So I thought if I could speak and tell them that they had a role to play, that maybe we could get things moving. So um, it was a journey for sure, for all of us, I think. Um, but you're right, it was also a distraction. And it continues to be a journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, I say distraction in a positive way. Um, I think, you know, as you get to be adults, everyone experiences loss, but, you know, the, the experience that you had losing Matthew to a hate crime, which was so unnecessary, you know, I think that gets back to why people would say you're the nicest people they wish they never met, because had this not happened to Matthew, we wouldn't have met you. No, we'd be and, the peace like parents, not, not people yeah. on the road. <laughs> And it makes yeah, us wonder I mean, what would have happened if if Matt was still alive. Would we have had the changes that we have with with marriage and the hate crime law and elimination of don't ask, don't tell, and 
and the comfort that young people have seeing same sex couples walking down the street holding hands we will you know it's it's something you always wonder what if nothing would have happened would we have had the changes or would we still be back in the dark ages uh before we lost man that's a that's an interesting point you know the the lgbt community community really stood up and said you know we need change and it was um it was a turning the corner moment i think for many in this country and the two of you were a leading role in that so you know that that's why you're often referred to as the mother and father of the lgbtq community well i think the biggest thing was when we lost matt to a check such a shock that somebody that small and, and that smart um would be would would die because uh he was considered different and it it awakened the straight community to what was happening to the lgbtq community because as parents ourselves we didn't realize the amount of hate and discrimination discrimination, violence against the LGBTQ community until we lost Matt. We're, and the straight community throughout the country was the same way. They were shocked. And so you saw all the candlelight vigils and you saw all the demands for equality and, and saw the yes. changes that have happened, not just federally, which we need more of, but also within the states and local communities. Yes. And when you say it was an, an impetus, you know, to change, I, it affected me greatly also, you know, the story I told before, you know, that could have been, you know, that snowball rolling that, you know, started me feeling like I have to make a change because I didn't know how to make a change. And, you know, it was the internet that said, you know, I can do something, I can do some marketing. And, you know, I think now's an exciting time because, you know, people do want to see change in this country for the LGBTQ community. And I know you two have been, you know, at the forefront of this, you know, in, in this era, at least, you know, we can go back to Stonewall, we could go back, you know, a long time, but, you know, we're talking now, you know, you're, you're celebrating 25 years this year. And, you know, I, I shouldn't even call it a celebration. So I'll, right. I'm going to take that back, you know, but, you know, in essence, you know, we can celebrate our successes. And I think that's what, you know, was going in my mind there, you know, because the celebration of advancing, the celebration of helping people, the celebration of now children being able to, you know, be safer, you know, coming out. So, you know, in my mind, I'm saying, you know, that's something to celebrate. So, you know, I know you're doing so much over the years. Like you said, you're doing training with law enforcement. You're doing so many things ab above, you know, what we have time for. But, you know, what I want to get into now is, you know, 25 years, a milestone. I know for, you know, an advocacy group such as yourself, it's another year, nothing really to celebrate. It's just another year going to get, you know, at what you do every single day. But, Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, for example, the initiatives, your plans for this year, and let's discuss on how the viewer of this podcast can get involved and help the Matthew Shepard Foundation. Well, we're, we're taking a look at preserving Matt's legacy. Um, Dennis and I are the only ones from the foundation that actually speak, and as you can tell, we're getting older, so uh, not much longer. We're not sure how much longer we are actually going to be able to do this. So we're creating programs online that are going to be accessible by students and teachers, uh, law enforcement agencies. We we'll also provide resources for folks doing the play, the Laramie project or the oratorio considering Matthew Shepard. And uh, also reminding people there's a documentary about Matt called Matt Shepard is a friend of mine. Um, so they get to know Matt and maybe get to know us a little better under different circumstances. So um, the curriculum we're rolling out is for high schools or middle school. Students are gonna be able to access it. Teachers can do it in a classroom situation, but we feel there's a need for this now that so many states have decided, oh, they're not gonna do anything to support the LGBT plus community 
um, in any way, and even passing dangerous legislation for trans kids, well, the trans community at large even, but specifically trans kids. And we want them to have a place to go where they, they know there is work being done <clears throat> and there are things, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that they can do, that their friends and supporters can do to help them and educate them about what the situation really is. So I'm really excited about um, rolling out this curriculum in September of this year, uh, beginning of the school year. So it's um, <clears throat> law enforcement is talking about hate crime, how to identify, how to investigate, um, LGBTQ plus liaisons and police stations. Um, a lot of work being done online and all of it can be done at their own pace. Um, but it's also a safe way to just educate yourself about what's needed and what's out there. So that's what we're working on right now. Dennis and I are still speaking, uh, corporations working with DOJ. Um, and the State Department. And the State Department. Um, just trying to keep Matt's story out there in the forefront. Matt is certainly not the only one. Hate crimes have increased uh, 50% in the last few years uh, and uh, targeted against the gay community. So this is really something that needs to be addressed. Hate has been unleashed and we need to figure out how to address it. I know that by sheer numbers, the people who wanna see the bad things stop outnumber the loudest voices. So we need to vote and we need to pay attention to our surroundings and we need to use our own voice. Our own voice is the most powerful tool against hate. Wow. That's very deep. And I, I thank you for sharing that with our audience because, you know, the experience that you have and this opportunity now for them to get this training online to their schools. Um, I know I want my daughters to receive this training. I mean, they're great kids. You know, my, my oldest daughter, Caitlin, her best friend is gay. He's the nicest boy. Um, you know, it, it's just so important. So thank you. Something else that Judy has done, um, in Lansing, Kansas, they were getting ready to do the Laramie Project. And one parent, not one group, but one parent, complained to the uh, school and the school board, so they canceled it. One parent. So what Judy did, she, in collaboration with the Tectonic Theater, who, who created the Laramie Project, they sent out an, an e-blast saying if anybody in Lansing, Kansas, teachers, parents, or students, or anybody else, wants the Laramie Project, we will send you free. We will mail you a book. And they've re, uh, sent out about 60 books so far. Mm -hmm. And some of them are coming from, from areas outside of Lansing, Kansas, who want the book. So... They're doing what they can to fight the stupidity of, of book banning. Because like you said, everything's online now. So what's the point of, of banning a book when you can find it? Uh, <clears throat> so that's, that's been pretty effective and, and uh, has helped those kids and parents and, and teacher educators in, in Lansing, Kansas. Well, you know, often on this podcast, you know, someone, a realtor is telling us about their community and I'm saying, great, great, great. And I'm not using that word now because it's just, it's like, it's overwhelming. You know, it gets to the point where, you know, how can one person come to a community event at a school and say that this isn't right for the community? They, they just don't know. They just don't know. But we can't change that person. That, that's not the, what this podcast is about. But your philosophy on, you know, telling the school that we can send the book to everybody and you do it, you know, or send the link to the to the campaign online. I think that makes a difference because, you know, that's that's very powerful. So that that's really that's powerful. So I know people can, you know, watch this podcast and, you know, they see your names, they see your, you know, your tagline erasing hate since 1998. I mean, that's just like phenomenal, the work that you have done. 
really because you have walked into doors, you know, like you said, corporations, law enforcement, schools, you're reaching everyone you can, you know, there, there's not one stone unturned that you don't leave behind for local communities even, you know, so if someone goes to matthewshepherd.org, can they find these trainings when they begin? Yes, definitely. Um, the law enforcement one is already online. It's called Out to Protect. The curriculum will be rolling out in September and there will be, you know, watch for this notices going out. Just go to the website, sign up for the newsletter and all those things will be, uh, you'll be advised of when it's going to be actually available and how to how to get to it. So yeah, it's uh, I'm really excited about it. The out to protect one is pretty interesting because uh, they do a lot with law enforcement. And because of that, that training is now mandatory uh, in California for all law enforcement. And the FBI is now interested in it also and starting to use it for training for for uh, their staff around the country. Well, wow. well, wow. you know, the difference you two have made, we can, when I say we, the world, the world can thank you because you lost something so precious. The world lost someone so precious. I know Matthew, he was, he was more than just, you know, a name, a, a foundation. Tell us a little bit about Matthew before we go, because we're going to wrap things up soon with respect to everyone's time here. Matthew was very smart. He spoke languages. He had dreams. And he wasn't just talking about dreams. He, he was a doer. Yeah, he was. He was small, five foot two something, uh, 105 pounds on a good day, um, spoke five languages. Um, he loved the theater. Um, started acting in our community theater at age of 10 and the community college as well. He loved politics. He was obsessed with um, politics and how it works. He understood that it wasn't, um, it wasn't a utopia, I guess, that it was hard work and a lot of setbacks. He understood that. He just wanted to help people. He just saw people as human beings stereotypes and categorizing folks was just not what Matt did. He just saw people as people, um, never understood bigotry or prejudice or uh, why people would single out an other, um, someone who's different from them. But just He just he just wanted to be a friend to everybody. And um, it, it was he was great loss, to not just us, but his friends and future friends. He was just a terrific kid. Yeah, he had uh, a lot going for him. He was one of the few, from the fifth grade up through high school, he was asked to be a peer counselor for his fellow classmates, which is a, quite an honor. And to have that um, basically for eight years, uh, being recognized as that, someone that other students could go to and they could trust that he would keep their secrets and help work out their problems uh showed what his future is going to be he went to work overseas with the state department to try and bring what he thought he had in this country in the way of equality and and responsibility and and privileges um of a democracy to other countries not knowing that uh, it's a two-tier system in this country you have you have one level which is the straight white christian males and then you have everybody else, including the women who are a second class citizens in this country. And um, he was pretty much against that and was trying to see what he could do to, to work to make change. Wow. Well, I know Matthew would be very proud of you. It's a hard story. It, it is a hard story. You know, I, I lost my sister when I was 19, she was 18. And, you know, I look back, I'm 53 now, and I say, you know, what was her legacy? You know, what, what would she have done? And, you know, it's not about that. This is about you too. And, you know, thank you so much for sharing your story because 
you know, I know Matthew would be so proud of what you've done and, you know, indirectly, maybe a lot of the work you've done, he was destined to do. Yeah. That's what, that's what we, we figure. Yeah. We think we're doing what he would be doing if he were still here. But the, the thing that people have to realize, your audience members, is that um, there's a lot of change that needs to be made now because of what's happened since the previous administration, let the cockroaches come out from underneath the rocks with all That's this right. hate. And it's been in, enabled and it's been encouraged now in all these states. And they have nothing as a platform, so they're using hate against somebody different. And, and the best way to do that is to tell your story, straight or gay, about your, your gay friends, your uh, culture, cultural friends, your migrant friends, whatever it might be. And you have to vote and you have to get others out to vote to get people in there that represent everybody and not just the loudest. They're not the brightest, but they're the loudest. And they're the ones who are taking over right now that, and we need to stifle them. Sorry, Jeff, we got a little political there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I think you said it so well. I think you said it so well. We do have to stifle them and, you know, we're going to do our best and we're going to do our best for LGBTQ rights and, you know, helping people reach their fullest potential in life. And, you know, here at LGBTQ Real Estate, our podcast is about, you know, bringing someone that success that they can you know have a home a roof over their head you know so all of these equality things you know go back to you know living a normal life living the american dream of home ownership you know and you need all those equalities to have confidence to be able to say i'm the same i'm going to get married to the person i love love is love I'm going to, you know, raise a family if that's what they prefer. I'm going to buy a home. I'm going to send my kids to school. You know, that that's the American dream, I think. And, you know, I think what we're doing here today is, is good because we're, you know, raising awareness to someone who may be young, may be questioning their role. And, you know, if, if they can achieve the American dream because some bully has made them feel uncomfortable one day and uh, we're erasing that hate. Well, thank you, Jeff, for the opportunity to share our story about Matt. Appreciate it very much. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope to see you soon at an event, wherever that may be. And like you said, you know, you're getting a little older. You're tired of being on the road. <laughs> the feeling is the same here. You know, I've done it, I've done it for almost 20 years now. And uh, there's only so much rock and roll road shows you can do. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It gets to the point where you never have to turn on the light in a hotel room because you know where everything is. Yeah, we all can't be Mick Jagger. <laughs> God bless them. The Rolling Stones are still going on their rock and roll show, right? <laughs> okay, well, you know, we ended on a smile. We always end our show with two thumbs up as a sign of positivity. So we can get two thumbs up from you both. Great, great. The future's looking up. Yes, thank you for creating all the awareness and and uh and letting people know that they are important and they have to do their part a pleasure a pleasure the feelings mutual thank you bye-bye thank you so much a pleasure thank you